The Exit New Kernel is integral to the iOS security. The kernel runs with high privileges on a low layer, and all the applications run above it. If an application manages to escalate into the kernel, that means it has escaped the sandbox and now has code execution context in the kernel. This is something that most jailbreaks do. For example, Uncover uses the Uncover application to then escalate into the kernel and get code execution and launch the jailbreak. Often it's not so easy. So first of all, you have to find a vulnerability, but sometimes it doesn't directly work from the application, but there are indirections in between how to get there. Nonetheless, the kernel is something that only a few people look into publicly because there's not so much tooling and also the documentation about this is often outdated. But I will show you that it's not so hard to download a closed source iOS kernel and take a look into it and also to compare it with the parts that Apple already open sourced. The iOS and macOS kernel is called XNU and Apple is even open sourcing it. So here you can see, for example, we have all the original names and we can really look into all the files, including all the comments and variable names that you might be interested in. So why should we even start reverse engineering it? Well, as you might have seen, the last commit is from five months ago, so it's always a bit behind. And also Apple leaves out some parts intentionally. And for this reason, we now have to look into the iOS releases themselves. iOS firmware updates either ship as IPSW, which is a full iPhone software image, or as OTA over the air update, which is only a diff to the previous version. Both variants contain the kernel, both variants contain the firmware for all the peripherals, but the OTA has fewer files that are applied to the file system, whereas the IPSW has the full file system. That means we can extract the kernel from both formats. On IPSW.me, you can download the latest iOS update, even if you don't have the according iPhone. So for example, I can now look into the iPhone 14 Pro Max and I can download the IPSW or the OTA. After downloading, we would have the following files for the IPSW and OTA. Both of them are SIPs, but you have to rename the IPSW so that it is also a SIP file. The OTA just has some asset data in it and there is a boot folder. And in that you can see the kernel cache as well as all the firmware. And the IPSW works similarly. So when you open it, you have the kernel cache, you have the firmware folder, and you have those DMGs, which you can mount on macOS by double-clicking. And once you mount this, you will see you get this partition. It's called Sydney, which is the code name of the iOS 16 release and also the reason for my start. The iOS kernel cache is a packed file which you can unpack with EMG4 tool. It is no longer encrypted, so if you find a tutorial that tells you something about key extraction and applying it, this no longer is the case. In the next step, I enter the OTA folder and I look into the kernel cache with EMG4 tool which I give the kernel cache as a first parameter, then I say minus E to extract it, and minus O specifies the output file, which is just the same name with a dot extracted, for example, as you wish. This runs for a short moment, and you can see that the kernel cache was extracted successfully. And now we can start analyzing it. In the following example, I will continue with an iOS 15 OTA, because this one contains some symbols and it is supported by Gitra. The iOS 16 format is not yet fully supported, but will probably be in the future. So to import the kernel cache, you just say import file, take the extracted kernel cache. This already takes a moment and you say single file to take the whole kernel, just use the defaults, wait for a short moment, 
this all worked if you see the summary like this. And as a next step, you can start the outer analysis. And the outer analysis will now try to find everything that's in the kernel, apply all the exported symbols in here. And this really takes very, very, very long. So I just did some shortcut here. Afterwards, you will see a couple of bugs or errors in the summary, but overall it worked. And now we can browse through this a bit. So you will see that they are functions. They start with underscore, but you will see that inside this, there's a lot. And there are also a lot of exports with names. So this already helps you to reverse engineer the kernel, but you can see the classes folder is empty. So to fill the classes, we can use the script for the kernel cache and apply everything that is in IOKit with the kcpy plugin, which you can download. And I also generated some of the IOKit information from the kernel with IOMeta already stored in this kernel.txt file. And now it runs again for quite a while, applying all the IOKit driver information. The interesting part here is that the iOS kernel mainly consists of all those IOK drivers, which are responsible for the peripherals, like anything, your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, all of these are IOK drivers. So after applying those classes, this will also look a lot more readable. Let's look into the generated classes. So for example, at R, we would find the Rose driver and Rose is the code name for the U1 ultra wideband chip, which does distance measurement. And as you can see here, the symbols were correctly applied and we can now also start analyzing this. Looks pretty good. And you start to reverse engineering the whole kernel. When you jailbreak your iPhone with Uncover, it is very common that it just crashes and reboots instead of being jailbroken because those jailbreaks and exploits, they are not so super stable. So on this iPhone, I have a couple of those kernel panics that just happened because I jailbroke the phone. And when we look into this, we can also see the panic reason. So we get the kernel version and everything as well as this panic string here. There's a tool for this that can symbolicate a kernel with the exported symbols. So it's not necessarily all symbols, but just the stuff that is in this closed source kernel on this very iPhone and then apply it to this panic to give us a backtrace. This tool is JTool2. So here we see how the panic happened and it looks the same for all the uncover panics on my phone. iOS kernel vulnerabilities are really the holy grail to jailbreaking. However, they are only where jailbreaks start. So you have to build an application that is exploiting a bug in the kernel, but then you have to go all the way back. So the jailbreak also has to ensure that you can install custom software despite all the security measures by Apple, which means that jailbreaks have to disable a lot of security mechanisms. This is not so easy and it's actually so hard that even though there are known bugs for iOS 15, no jailbreak has been released for a year.